Hi there, this is Quick. The final on-set spy report for House of the Dragon Season 2 filming. After this, we're going to get, you know, casting leaks, maybe even script leaks, and trailers will come sooner instead of later to analyze, but in terms of boots-on-the-ground reporters, this is the absolute last thing. That's because filming on Season 2 wrapped yesterday, Friday, September 29th. Though, actually, exterior filming wrapped like a month ago. I'm a month behind dealing with all the Rook's Rest stuff and various other reports that weren't on set, but like the makeup department leaked that the White Walkers are coming back, other things like that, certain casting leaks. Thankfully, everything has caught up that I was a month behind and we had a month of sitting around where we weren't getting reports from people in the forest taking photos but things coming out from the studio, so that worked out that I managed to catch up just in time. I'm very tired. But there was one other thing that leaked out, which I wanted to clarify in an intentionally short video just to keep everyone focused. And people asked, you know, like Red Team Review, other channels. Yes, we have known for a while. This isn't the last report we got. It's the last one I'm publicly sharing. I, I'm not sitting on any other ones we didn't, that I can't tell you about, like I was for, like, when I said we knew about the Reina stuff, we knew about certain other, like Oscar Tully, we knew about that from leaks some, over a month ago. No. Since, like, the first week of July, we knew from on-set reports at Dinnerwig Quarry where they built the Hall set. This is pure set spy stuff. This isn't script leaks or casting. It's Someone who was there said they saw this, who was accurate about other things. A set spy at the Harren Hall set, first week of July, confirmed to us that Rhaenyra will visit Harren Hall in the eighth and last episode of season two. We don't know anything more than that. I can't stress this enough. I'm not actually opposed to this. Rhaenyra didn't go there in the book. But in terms of travel distances, this is nothing, or it's not even through enemy territory. If you look at a map, if you just loop up through the Bay of Crabs, yeah, even in a straight line, I think that's a, in Rhaenyra faction-controlled territory, the northern part of the Crownlands. Harren Hall isn't that far away from Dragonstone. I mean, looking at a map, it's equidistant from King's Landing. It's roughly the same distance making a triangle between Dragonstone to King's Landing or Dragonstone to Harrenhal. So it's not like if she was zipping up to Winterfell after they treated Jace going to Winterfell as a big journey, that would be weird. But could Rhaenyra travel through friendly territory to check in on Harrenhal where her main land army is massing? Okay, that's plausible and it gives Emma Darcy more to do. So, they're playing around with it, but it, it, it's plausible, so I'm not opposed to it. We don't know what they're doing with the war. Some people are saying, oh no, are they going to condense that her army will directly go from Harren Hall to King's Landing when they don't do that in the book? It's a fake out. That they go, rather than go straight for King's Landing, will attack the Lannister. They're trying to catch her army in a pincer's movement. Lannister's from the west the Green's army from King's Landing in the east, that they go, yeah, we're not going to try to take the capital right away. We'd lose. So we're going to fake out and run west to attack the Lannisters head-on rather than wait for you to double-team us. That's what happens in the books. And it's this whole drawn-out campaign, I'm not even getting into the particulars, we, don't, we have no confirmation they're changing that. Just Rhaenyra comes to survey the troops. It might even be faking out the audience that we're led to believe they're going to do that before going, that's a trick, they're not doing it. And why would they be investing so much energy from other spy photos we've seen in setting up the dragon seeds? That when they get new dragon riders, they're very important for how they trick the greens on the other side on the east. That we suddenly got new dragons that with a skeleton force were able to attack you because they're backed up by dr new dragons. If they were going to do that, they wouldn't have set up the dragon seeds. I must admit, I don't know if they're going to change something, but glass half full, we have no proof that they're changing the army movements. 
just that Rhaenyra checks in on them before they make their, they, whichever way they go, west or east, she's checking in on them. Other than that, we have no proof for anything. Fair enough. Clickbait channels who like to distort our rumors, and when I say our, I mean the hardcore spy reporters have been doing an amazing job. Danian Intelligence, House of the Dragon Croatia, Realm of the Dragon, House of the Dragons. These are the people that broke the Creed and Stark casting last week. Have known this, and it's been circulating in private, and maybe a mention or two since July. Some word of this came out and got distorted, and then pe it's not just as it gets distorted, people intentionally distort it and make crap up as clickbait and embellish it and have been saying all this nonsense about we never heard that Rhaenyra takes uh, uh, Harren Hall with Daemon. Daemon takes Harren Hall in the first episode. And we know from other things that Rhaenyra is not with him when that happens. The morons and the clickbait things, and there's more than one in more than one format, have been condensing this, and they're lying on purpose to get a rise out of us. To screw with us, and it's just, you, you don't even... Do you do this to the other fandoms, like Star Wars and Wheel of Time? Do you just wander between fandoms looking how to, how to screw with fans who believe in things? I don't know. It can't be for attention, because they're not even getting that much. But the point is... People have been making up fake rumors intentionally mixed with half-truths from the reports of these hardcore reporter channels to try to lend it an air of credibility, and some people mix and matching these things that, no, as far as we know, well, I, I've already said, Rhaenyra is at, is at Shipbreaker Bay in Episode 1 to pick up Luke's body. She isn't near Harren Hall because <laughs> we had this other leak reliably that it was an unreliable narrator moment of what happened to Luke's, who, Luke's body that, well, actually, Rhaenyra found him. Okay, they're going with the third option. All the historians were wrong because it was a mystery. People have been adding all these other crazy, invented things, and we don't know everything Daemon is doing episode by episode. There are some gaps. They have invented some storylines for him. We're not really sure in what capacity. And there are going to be points where Daemon... Because they're not that far away. He flies back to Dragonstone at various points. He sneaks into King's Landing at the end of the first episode to set up Blood and Cheese. So, like, maybe he goes back to Dragonstone to oversee the Dragon Seeds. I'm not really sure, but... They have an air bridge, of course, but of supply. that we can No, we can maintain supplies during the siege by air. We have this air, air bridge of dragons flying in supplies to the besieged city. That'll work. No, but seriously... All we heard, without embellishment, is in just Episode 8, the only thing we can confirm, Episode 8, Rhaenyra goes to Harren Hall, survey the troops. And we have no reason to believe the troops are doing anything other than they were in the books, just that she surveys the army. Fair enough. Because it's not like, oh, Littlefinger had a jetpack, yeah, he would need a jetpack to get around in Season 2 of Game of Thrones. House of the Dragon... Characters literally have dragons. And there is a, the ridiculousness of, oh, a dragon can zip from Blackwater Bay to the wall. They can't. But we, I've had other videos where I said, they do have a roughly consistent, if you draw a circle around King's Landing, where the radius is from King's Landing to Harring Hall to the Erie to Storm's End, that's like a day's flight. And they treat that pretty consistently. You know, magic A is magic A is what TV Trips calls it. That as long as you follow your rule consistently, that it's like a full day's flight from Dragonstone to King's Landing or Dragonstone to Harrenhal, they're reasonably close to each other. I don't have a problem with this. And that's all we know. And while it's led to blind speculation of are they changing something with the army movements, if that's how they play I know it's if. No problem there. But clickbaiters are making increasingly making up implausible things because they ran out of ideas. Is this how people sustain themselves in season seven and eight when all real analysis and story had gone? That it became a meta game of who can make up the most entertaining lies as opposed to what's the most plausible? What really frightened me is I don't use TikTok. 
you know, I well, I, I watch you know people share interesting things from it. I watch it, but you know, just because all, all all the malware in it and all the other stuff. But you know, I I enjoy when I see stuff from it cross linked to Instagram or Twitter and stuff. But the you can't make a report on this that's two minutes long. And there are people who can make shorts, YouTube shorts, I never really got into because it wasn't really competing with TikTok. But the one time I really checked out, are there reporters for this on TikTok? And there must be some nice ones, but the really prominent ones, because it's a two-minute clip, it's supposed to be who can entertain you the most in a short two-minute burst where they don't have to back up what they're saying with citations or cautions or anything. That it was stunning when early in the season... Remember when Miguel Sapochnik left uh, the news that he was not coming back for season two? I officially don't know why that happened. We think that it's he barely came back for season one. It was a lot of work, and admittedly it was, but they offered him a lot of money. They offered him co-show co ownership. It could be as simple as he didn't never wanted to come back for season two. I kind of got that feel from him. It could be because he was fighting with Ryan Connell... It could be because he respectfully disagreed with Condal. We don't know. So I, at the time, I just said, I'm willing to accept their cover story that it could just be he never wanted to come back for season two. We've seen no hard evidence one way or the other, and I'm not going to circulate gossip like some quilting society or something. But when you went on to TikTok and stuff, worse than any clickbait, when I say, oh, the clickbaiters, I don't even look at the TikTok stuff. That this is... Just as far as we are above the YouTube clickbait channels, the YouTube clickbait channels are above the shit that the TikTok clickbaiters do. Because it has to get your attention in a two-minute burst. And it's so weird that, like, everyone's locked in their own internet bubble that when you listen, and that's why I'm so against the clickbait stuff, they go, what's the harm? It's when that's all of the information you're providing people... There's, like, people I run into who think that, that the stuff they're saying is real because it's all they're exposed to. And they don't even caution, oh, take this with a grain of salt, or I heard it from a guy. They're reporting it as fact. It was, it, I remember it was this TikTok channel. I'll say it was with a woman. I'm not going to say who, but... And she was rambling off the most entertaining Mag reasons why Miguel Sapochnik left. And at one point she even said... That's not as fun as if this version is true. I want this version to be true. And you realize she isn't trying to figure out what happened. She's trying to come up with the most entertaining story. That reality has become selling a meta story to people. And the worst part for these clickbaiters is there, there's no consequences. What if you've been spewing all this nonsense about these leaks that aren't true? People should be leaving you when this doesn't happen in Season 2. Like, when I gave a leak outline for Season 1, I got it from Redanian Intelligence and the other Realm of Dragon, House of Dragon Croatia. Someone talked and gave a very thorough outline of Season 1 prior to airing, and we think that HBO didn't punish this because, pure speculation, that they didn't punish this leak because the leak made book fans and TV fans cautiously optimistic about season one, where people were very skeptical of it. They would want an outline to come out that for people, oh, this sounds pretty good, actually. Most of the stuff I've ever said turned out to be true. I can't even think of one or two, one or two things where I got some of the details wrong, but in broad strokes, I've never, or if I have, I, I, I can't, tell me in the comments, I don't think I've ever repeated a fake rumor that I have a standard that I would only tell you guys something if I believed in it. Or it came from a credible source, or well, I said, well, a reasonably credible source said this, but they heard it secondhand. It might be true, I'm not really sure, but it's worth reporting on. When you get into the hardcore clickbaiters of, of the, just the scum of the earth, the bowels of the internet, that click the worst clickbaiters you can think of on YouTube would look down on. The trash I've seen on... There's great TikTok fandoms for House of the Dragon. Don't get me wrong. I'm talking about the people who have risen to prominence by spewing the, spinning the most elaborate lies. Reminds me of, just because it was in the news this past week, Sophie Turner's getting a divorce. This isn't funny. There are children involved, and there's a custody battle going on now because they have dual citizenship, UK versus US, and they're fighting over that, so it's getting ugly really fast. 
and just that celebrity report, the cottage industry of celebrity reporting that people are coming up with uh, on the celebrity sites, the most entertaining explanation, juiciest, messiest explanation for a celebrity breakup, regardless of whether it's rooted in reality, because these are, these are TV characters to you. That Sophie is going through a messy divorce. It involves a custody battle. This is heartrending. There are no heroes or villains. Well, there's no. It, it, it's hard to be a world of black and white when it comes to that. It just, it just, I feel awful. And you're trying to come up with the most elaborate. No, he cheated on her. No, she cheated on him. And they go, I don't care if it's real. It's entertaining. This, this is my soap opera with these people's lives. But that's just you know, the usual stuff you see on, you know, celebrity breakups. It's a whole industry unto itself. That people were making up and openly saying, I don't care what's real of why Sapochnik left. I'm coming up with the most entertaining lie. Like, is that why people were expecting something better in season eight? Because they, during the off year in 2018, they had spent a year just coming up with... The goal was to make an entertaining theory when I'm interested in coming up with an accurate theory, even if it's banal or relatively mundane. That aliens aren't landing in King's Landing, that it's something more practical than that. I, I don't know how they do it, so... I guess that's a note to end on for the final on-set report, that we heard that Rhaenyra quickly flies to Harrenhal, which isn't that far from Dragonstone, and while there, I guess she oversees the troops. We don't know where the troops are going. They still a chance they're going where they were in the books, and we see no indication they changed anything with the troop movements. And that's it. Now, it's possible this happens at the beginning of Episode Eight. Then the troops go and have a battle somewhere. We don't know. The, these troops wouldn't be involved in the Battle of the Gullet directly, even if they, they were doing the book version. We increasingly don't think the Battle of the Gullet, the big naval battle, happens at the end of Season 2, or maybe it happens in the Season 3 premiere, because so many other things, like, we have a pretty good uh, idea what happens in episode 7, and other things are moving at a relaxed pace to get the story right, to round out the characters. That Oscar Tully, we know from confirmed leaks, Oscar Tully is meeting Daemon at Harren Hall in episode 7. That Reyna is in the Vale in episode 7. That the sowing of the dragon seeds is in episode 7. We, we don't think they're having a battle of that scale. So, for people concerned about this, it might just be a nice invented scene to give Emma a bit more to do, because in the book, there's like a whole chapter where Rhaenyra is so despondent over Luke's death, she's almost catatonic, she doesn't do anything. She's just bereaved for a full chapter. Or, you know, or at most would be discussing army, like what Tywin did, discussing army movements around the small council table, and, or in this case, the painted table, and they wanted to give Rainier a few more things to do, and I'm not sure if these inventions are good or bad. I have to see them. The, the ones we've heard of, that, but the, the, from ones we can confirm, I haven't heard anything bad yet. So I guess the message here is beware people who are making up big hype titles about the, the main characters. Like, I heard Daemon did this. Some guy in my DMs told me Rainier did that. Hey, Amon and Helena are popular now. I should start making up lies about them versus, like, I made a full video about, hey, you know how in the book Reyna goes to the Vale? We heard reliable, we saw reliable leaks that they're actually putting that on screen instead of just leaving it off screen. That's what reliable reporting looks like when you're dedicated to it as opposed to these flash-in-the-pan crazy rumors you forget about in a week. So that's the last one there. We had heard that, we've known that since July. Some other people have heard it, intentionally elaborated on it just to get attention. That's going to be happening. From this, hooray, I'm done. It's Saturday, the day after filming wrap. There will be reshoots, of course, but interior stuff. And I'm moving on to the Season 2 filming overall summary of like what we think the season episode-by-episode episode schedule will be. That's the organic outgrowth of this. So, in time for Sunday, I'm going to work from now, working on the Season 2 overall filming schedule, overview, everything we know. And we have a pretty clear picture of some of this. Not for certain B-plots, but for other characters. We have a general idea for a couple of episodes what they're doing. 